grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of heaven and earth, you come in close and make us yours. Equip us by your Spirit to confess our sin, embrace your forgiveness, and seek the way you set before us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. With honesty of heart, let us confess our sin. You may kneel or be seated. Merciful God, forgive us. Our will is handcuffed to sin, and we cannot break free. We have spoken when we should have kept quiet. We were silent when we should have said something. We acted when we knew better. still when we know we should have moved. <coughs> For the wrong we have done, for the good we have failed to do, have mercy on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, 
Look to the Son given to heal you and set you free because God loved the world so much. Take hold of life, eternal life. Amen. us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, and that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Word of God, word of life.
A reading from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. In order to bring you to God, he was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. And God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John into Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you, those of you who are in the choir, for that beautiful anthem, Show Me Thy Ways. How pretty that was, and what a nice reminder for what Lent is about. That Lent is a time that we want God to show us God's ways, to show us the way of Jesus, so that we can live our lives the way that God wants us to, and so that we can always be made new by God's love. Now for Lent, some people give something up. Have you ever heard of giving something up for Lent? What are some things that you know that people give up for Lent? Any of you have any ideas? What do you think, Declan? Some people give up candy for Lent. That's right. Just in things that they like very much and they're giving it up during Lent. How long does Lent last? For 48 days and 48 nights and not including Sundays. I think, that, I think it might include Sundays if you do four. I think it's 40 days and 40 nights plus Sundays. So yes, we're right on the same idea there, I think. What else do people give up? Bad habits. Oh, yeah, that's a good thing to give up for Lent, isn't it? Do you think anybody ever gives up watching TV for Lent? They do. They do. I had, at my last church, I had a 12-year-old who said, I am not going to watch TV all during Lent. And she told me it was getting very, very hard, but she didn't. And she was so happy when it was all over and she didn't watch any TV. Some people don't eat meat during Lent or they don't eat meat on Fridays in Lent. There are lots of ways that people give something up for Lent. And when we give something up, that can be called fasting also. When we fast from something or we give something up, it's a way of saying, I don't need this other stuff. I don't need TV. I don't need candy. I don't need my bad habits. I don't need any of that because all I need is God's love for me. There's another thing people do for Lent. Sometimes instead of giving something up, people give something special for Lent. Did you ever hear of that? 
giving something for Lent? What do you think people give for Lent? Jacinda. Donations, yes. And I brought the God's Global Barnyard, little barn. If you didn't get one of these last week, you can get one of these this week. And you can put a little bit of money in there. Maybe when you, whenever you have a little money or you find some, you put it in this little box and then you bring it to church and this is going to buy our cow. We're going to buy a cow. If you didn't hear this, Trinity will have its very own cow and we're going to keep it right over where that piano is now. No, no, no. We're going to give the cow. We are going to give the cow to somebody in a poor village somewhere else in the world so that they can get milk from the cow and they can make cheese from that milk and yogurt and things like that and they can sell it and make some money for their family and also have food to eat. So we're going to buy a cow. If you put money in one of these and bring it to church, we're buying a cow. Sometimes people also do special things like they will write a letter. Um, our daughter's doing that this year. Our daughter, Rachel, is every day in Lent, she's writing a note, a letter to somebody who has shown God's love to her, and she's saying thank you. How do I know this? Because I got one of those letters, which was pretty cool. But she's sending 40 letters out this Lent to people. You can make pictures. If you don't write yet, you can make pictures and give them to somebody. Maybe you could do it 40 times, or you can do once a week during Lent. Also, sometimes people combine those two things, giving up and giving. Like, instead of eating candy, you say, Mom, I am not going to eat candy all during Lent, and the money that you would spend to buy me candy, I want you to give it to me so I can put it in my barn. Or, I am not going to watch TV. Well, maybe not all TV. I could tell you guys we're not going to give up TV all the way. I am not going to watch one of my favorite shows all through Lent, and in the time that I would usually watch that show, I'm going to draw pictures for somebody I love every day. Stuff like that. You can think what you want to do for Lent, because it's not a rule that everybody has to do the same thing. But think about it, because Lent's just starting. Think about what you would like to give or give up for Lent, and every time you do that, remember that we are asking God in that to show us God's way in our lives. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you that you are the most important thing in our lives. Help us to let go of other things that don't matter as much, to be able to give and to give up so that we can let you show us your ways. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. You may go back. The Lord be with you. Please pray with me. Good and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. And may our Lenten journey be one of growth, renewal, and hope. Amen. After this winter's rain, salt, and mud, I am ready for some spring cleaning. After hosting a string of house guests since Christmas and coping with Phyllis's bout with the flu, I'm excited to throw open the windows, sweep out our garage, and shampoo our carpets. There are dust bunnies to attack, garden beds to shape up, and a closet full of winter clothes to sort through. It's getting to be that time of year. Of course, no spring cleaning we face can measure up to the task of Noah, who we heard about in our first reading in Genesis. Most of you remember that Noah and his family were cooped up in an ark full of animals while it rained nonstop for 40 days and 40 nights. But do you remember how long Noah waited on the boat for the floodwaters to recede? Genesis tells us that Noah stayed on his floating zoo for a total of a year and 10 days. He couldn't even open the windows until the 11th month. Talk about the need for spring cleaning. Can you imagine 
being closed up on an ark with all those animals for a year, even though Noah had been surrounded by water for close to 400 days, I imagine the first thing he wanted to do when he got off the ark was to take a really long shower. And if he ever planned to take the boat out for a little fishing trip or some water skiing with Mrs. Noah, well, he'd have to do some major spring cleaning first. I guess that's why he just left the ark sitting on the top of Mount Ararat. The season of Lent, which began last Wednesday on Ash Wednesday, is a time for spiritual spring cleaning. In fact, the word Lent is derived from an old English word for springtime. At first, spring may not seem like a common view of this season. There's a notion that Lent is a dark and somber time. Images of freshness and new life have often been held off in the church until Easter. But actually, Lent is a springtime season for the church. In Lent, we read about God's promises, like the covenantal sign of the rainbow. In Lent, we hear about newness, as in our second reading from 1 Peter, which exults in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the new life that is ours in baptism. And in Lent, we hear about cleansing. In fact, all three of our readings today use the image of water in some way as they talk about cleaning out the clutter of the past and moving forward as cleansed and forgiven people. Now, the first step in spring cleaning is to recognize that something's dirty. When I drive my car through the mud, I can tell right away that it needs to be washed. But when the dirt and dust of driving just gradually build up on the finish, I become somewhat immune to the soil. In the same way our culture is con has conditioned us to think that we don't really need cleaning. Of course, there are plenty of commercials that tell us that our breath smells bad, or that, no, that our body needs to be washed and deodorized, or that there's bacteria on the kitchen counter, or dinginess in our laundry. But the degradation of our spirits, the muddying of our values, the squalor of poverty, the stain of sin in our lives, all that seems to accumulate with relatively little notice. One out of five children in the U.S. lives in poverty. Have we noticed? The average teen in our country consumes nine hours of media a day and has meaningful conversation with a parent for about 30 seconds. Are we paying attention? Biblical literacy is decreasing while access to pornography is at an all-time high. Our empathy for refugees and immigrants lies somewhere between compassion fatigue and outright disdain. So far this year, there have been 30, 30 mass shootings in the United States, and our search for solutions appears to be at a standstill. Do we even recognize that something's seriously wrong? So Jesus' first sermon that Mark records so succinctly in his gospel begins with a call for repentance. Repent, turn around, make a change, Jesus says. He calls us to look at those aspects of our lives that we'd rather ignore, individually and as a society, those sins from which we need to be cleansed, those failures for which we need to be forgiven. On Ash Wednesday, in obedience to Christ's call, we confessed our pride, hypocrisy, and impatience. We admitted our self-indulgent appetites and our exploitation of others. We repented of our intemperate love for worldly goods and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We declared our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. In this season of repentance, Jesus calls us to recognize how much there is in our own lives that needs to be cleaned. 
What do you do when your house is dirty? Well, eventually. I suppose you clean it. When your car is muddy, you wash it. When your kids mess up their room before company comes, you make them stay in there until it's clean again. At least that's happened in my house when I was a kid. So Jesus' next words in the gospel are unexpected. Jesus doesn't say, look at this mess you've made of your life. Look at the way you've trashed my world. Look at the sin you tolerate. You made this mess, now live in it until you clean it up. Jesus doesn't say any of that. Instead, he says simply, believe the good news. Believe the good news. Too often we let our Lenten discipline focus on our shortcomings, the wrong we've done, the punishment we deserve, or the suffering we cause our God. In other words, for 40 days, we keep looking at the dirt. But Lent is a springtime season, and God calls us to turn away from the dirt, to repent of the sin in our lives, and to turn toward the new life that has been prepared for us. Believe the good news, he says. And the good news of Lent is that we don't have to remain in sin. Our lives, our culture, our world, even with all our failures and sin, aren't hopeless. We are people of promise, of newness, of hope. And Lent is a time to celebrate the renewal that God offers us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Years ago, God spoke through the prophet Isaiah and declared, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. God's work of spring cleaning is constant in our lives. This Lent, repent and believe that good news. You are being cleansed. God is washing you daily. The waters of baptism are flowing through your life like a springtime fountain, nourishing the roots of your faith and washing you clean of your sin. Yes, Lent is a season for spring cleaning, and we are the ones being cleaned. We are the ones being gloriously, miraculously, lovingly renewed as we live in the promises of God. And in that renewal, we become partners with God for the healing of this broken and hurting world. The waters are flowing through our lives until every sin and sorrow is washed away forever and until justice flows through creation like a mighty river and mercy like a never-ending stream. It's Lent. Repent. Believe. And live the good news. Amen.
Renewed in the promise of baptism, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, for all who preach, teach, and inspire your people to lives of service. Renew your church in ministry, mission, and compassion. For our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal and Father John, for St. Mark's Lutheran and their minister, Doug, for Christ Lutheran, Glenside, and Pastor Harry, for Trinity Deaf, Common Ground, and for all our Lutheran and ecumenical partners in ministry, unite us in faith and uphold us in the promise of baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, for the well-being of both our own surroundings and of distant places, for favorable weather and sustaining rains, for creatures awakening from hibernation or beginning seasonal migrations. Provide safe habitats and abundant food for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations, for all who govern or hold positions of authority, for those who work to protect their communities from violence, for safety in our schools and neighborhoods, protect all who place themselves in danger to save others from harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for those moving to new communities, for individuals who are incarcerated or recently released from prison, for those who are abused or neglected, for the lonely, for immigrants and refugees, for those who are ill, especially Karen, Carl and Betty, Kathy, Tom, Walter, Martha, Al, Joan, Barb, Ed, Carl and Grace, for those who grieve, especially the families and friends of Mike Nagel, Shayla Abron, and Mary Good, for those who are homebound or residing in care facilities, especially Grace, Karen, Barbara, Dorothea, Joan G, Joan H, Betty, Carl, Pat, Dick, Theta, Ruth, Helen, Walter, Tom, Dorothy, Annabelle, and Esther. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly, for musicians, artists, and poets who help us envision your love through word, image, and song. For those who have faced exclusion or felt forgotten. For all who reach out in love and welcome. For our members, Barbara, Judy, Kelly, Carl and Betty, and Jane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died as they receive the fulfillment of your promises made to them in baptism. Sustain us in the hope of resurrection life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your covenant of mercy, O God, we lift our prayers to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Matt has asked me to announce that our Ash Wednesday service will be rebroadcast at 6 p.m. this evening, if you'd like to see that, prior to the regular broadcasting of music from Trinity and our normal service that you are at right now, so you probably won't need to watch it except for watching the um,
treble choir again, of course. Next week's forum, Legacy Gift Planning with Yvonne Lembo, um, is not only for those of us who are wealthy, it's for all of us as we think about, and it's not only for those of us who are old either, by the way, it's for all of us as we think about what we would like to leave behind um, as, our, as a life law, as a beyond our life legacy for um, the things that are important to us, whether that be the church, whether it be our family, whether it be some other charitable cause or educational institution. Um, Yvonne is not here to um, put the screws to anybody to please leave money to Trinity. That's not the idea. The idea is to think about how we might best use the gifts God has given us beyond this life. Our Wednesday noon day this week will focus on creation, and we will follow that with soup supper or soup luncheon. Cowabunga offerings, as well as world hunger and Easter decoration offerings, will continue to be received for the next several weeks. I want to thank all of you for your generosity. We have about three quarters of a cow already, so you guys are doing great on that. Are there any other announcements this day? Okay, now we will have the ushers come and receive the offering.
Let us pray. Merciful God, receive the sacrifices of our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives, that following in the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
Return to God with all your heart. Receive bread for the journey. Drink for the desert. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Compassionate God, as Jesus called disciples to follow him, bless those who go forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick or homebound. May these gifts be signs of your love and prayers, that through the sharing of the body and blood of Christ, all may know your grace and healing revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. 